I never told her to keep it. I never told her to, to get rid of it. But within my heart, I would just hope that she would. Because I was thinking about me. I was thinking about me. And I remember she was from another country and she called and she said, I got rid of it. I don't know how it affected her, but I can tell you how it affected me. For years, for years my heart, for years my heart condemned. I never forgave myself as a result of what I was a part of. You see, there are many of us who commit the act and then just like David, in order to cover our sins, we commit murder. To cover our sins, we take the life of an innocent child, this unborn baby, we take his life just to cover our sins. And for years, friends, my heart condemned me. For years, I, I never forgive myself. That dark cloud followed me every single year, year in and year out. I was in pain and I like, suffered as a result. But praise be to God, this man came to church. I know I always keep going back to 1998, but that's when it all happened, friends. That's when all the changes took place. In 1998, this man came and he told me about my sins. And I confessed. And I accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior for the first time. And as a result, I started reading. And I started studying God's Word. And I started reading the Bible more. And then I followed the scripture, 1 John 3, verse 20, and the Bible told me, for if your heart condemns us, then God, God is greater than your heart. Jesus will let me know that he is greater than my heart, friend. He let me know the length for it, is what I'm saying. If you have 10 pounds of sin, then I have 100 pounds of grace. He let me know the word sin abounds grace so much more about it. The Lord has let me know, friend. But he can save from the other most to the gutter most. He wanted me to know that he's able to make all my crimson stains as white as snow. He said the detergent in his blood is rich enough. Yeah. It's rich enough. And praise be to God, friends. Amen. 1998, I accepted the grace and the forgiveness of God. And I want you to know, friends, that who the Lord set free is free indeed. Yes. Man, those dark clouds went away and I no longer felt I was no longer tormented and always sad. But I was set free. I mean, it's, it's like somehow someone turned the light bulb on. I mean, I mean, it was just it's a beautiful thing when you are set free. There's somebody here today that might have committed murder, that might have gotten someone pregnant and had to, to cover the sin. Like David, they committed murder to cover the sin. And your heart has been condemning you for years. You've never really gotten over that situation. But I'll let you know, friend, that Jesus is here today. He can set somebody free today. I don't know what we have done. We could have done some other different things in our life, and our hearts are condemning us. But Jesus is saying, please, friends, don't leave here today with that burden. Burden, friends, as Letitia played for us, just as I am. Burden friends are lifted at Calvary. And Jesus is calling somebody today. Jesus is saying to someone today, please don't leave here without burden. If you want to be set free, if you've been running around, fooling around as a young person or an older person, and you want to get rid of all these besetting sins, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day for victory. Today is the day that Jesus wants to set you free. Jesus is greater than your own. And I know that from first and experience. I gave it all over to Jesus. And I accepted his forgiveness. And I was set free today. Don't leave here, friends. Please don't leave here today with a burden. It might not have been abortion. It could have been anything else in your life that you've been wrestling with. And those double clouds are there and you've never forgiven yourself for what you've done. 
And Jesus is saying today, where sin abound, grace much more abound, friends. He wants you to know that He is greater. There's nothing that you can do that I can't forgive you. I can clean you up today and make you brand new. If there's someone today, and I tell you, in 1998 when that preacher was preaching, I didn't care who was looking. When he made the call, I knew that I was in pain, I was in sin, and I needed some relief, friends. I couldn't continue on the way that I was. I didn't care who was looking at me. Oh, what did Brother Aaron do? Why is he going up to the altar? And many times those who are sitting next to you probably have done something even worse in their life. And they need to come too. But somehow they're sitting there. Jesus is calling. Don't leave today with a burden. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, and Jesus is able and He is willing to set you free. Today, is there one? Is there one that will come for Jesus today? Is there one that will walk forward and let the Lord know that I want to be set free? Praise be to God. Is there one? Jesus is calling. Don't leave here today. Don't be looking around at what other people might be saying. Don't leave with your burdens today. Burdens are lifted. I count. The Lord is speaking to somebody today. We need to come to Jesus. Don't be like me. For years I could have been set free. But I kept on being, I didn't know who I was. I didn't realize that God was, was able. To set me free. But Jesus wants to set somebody free today. And I tell you, from 1998, that wasn't like the, the, the boys and the guys in my community no more. I gave up all the life of sin. I realized I need, I need to protect the courage of my sisters. And I, I was a warrior after that point, protecting. I wasn't, I'm um, trifling no longer with their heart. But I realized who I was and what I needed to do. A higher part was upon my life. And so likewise is for you. Is there enough? Is there enough? There is somebody today that has never given Jesus. I've never surrendered all to Jesus. And Jesus is saying, That burden is for you. So when the great get the morning comes, if you want to be in that number, when the great, when the saints go marching in, you have never been baptized. You just want to say to them, Lord, I want to be saved in thy eternal kingdom. When you come the second time, if there is one, just raise your hand. Jesus is going to make note of that hand. He's here for this there one. They would like to go all the way with Jesus today in the watery grave of baptism. You've never been baptized. Great be to God. Jesus, see the hand. Praise be the Lord. It might not be today, but one of these days you want to go all the way. Jesus saw the hand. Is there enough? Is there enough for Jesus today? Is there one with friends? If you hear his voice, please, today is the day of victory. Don't honor your heart. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is going to fill hell full. But those who always think that tomorrow is promised. It is not promised, friends. We don't know what's going to happen the next minute. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the very moment in the moment of victory. If you hear his voice, can you see the intimate picture? The church is praying. Please, let's pray. All eyes are closed and everything head bowed. Now we need to pray for that soul who's going to go too far today. Jesus want to save somebody. Pray for that soul. I know someone is uneasy in their seat. The Spirit of God is here and he wants you to come forward. You know you need to come forward. And Jesus is pleading. He's knocking on your heart's door and is asking you to let him in. Can you see the intimate picture? He's running at you. He's been running after you for years. And you might be saying, shut up, Lord. I'm living with a woman that is not my wife. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But friend, you can never be ready enough. You can't clean yourself up to come to God. Come just as you are. Make one step to God and take two steps towards you. He will do it. You can't do it. 